Okay, welcome back to another video. We are going to have a look at another Earthship principle today. Last time we've, yeah, we've already covered thermal, thermal solar heating and cooling and solar and wind electricity. Uh, you can see those in the related videos thing uh, or on the channel. Um, we're going to have a look at contained sewage treatment today. So let's dive into that. Uh, hit the subscribe button below if you want to see these when they pop up. I'll be uploading one a week or one, one or two a week as we uh, proceed through the presentations. So, we've got wastewater. In earthships we don't see that as waste, but we use, use it for watering plants, flushing toilets. And there are two kinds. We've got grey water and black water. We'll take a look at grey water first. And that is simply water that comes out of your showers and your hand basins when, when it's finished being used there. So instead of throwing that water away to the drains outside, onto the sewage treatment plant, or straight in the river in some cases, from the showers and hand basins, the water flows through a waste pipe to the filter at one end of the planter. So these filters have been made around the world from, from peat, gravel, sand, other materials. Uh, you might need a trap in there if you're using the kitchen waste, we'll come to that in a minute. But after filtering, the water runs through the planter, the entire length of the front of the building these usually are, so they're quite substantial. Um, that wastewater feeds the plants. Now, as long as you're not putting something like radioactive, I don't know, <laughs> radioactive Clorox down your drains cleaning them, um, natural stuff, natural soaps, that kind of thing is going to be okay, and that's not too difficult to, for most people to make a switch from head and shoulders or whatever they're using to to something a little bit more easily biodegradable. Um, something interesting I found out about these planters is that it's not just the soil and the filter, it's not just the, f the combination of the filter and then the soil that cleans the water as it goes through. There's some biological stuff going on there, the, the active bacteria in the, in the soil itself, but also the oxygen that the roots of the plants take down into the soil and the water oxygen being highly reactive it will it will react with with anything that's in that soil quite well so that breaks down a lot of the uh, a lot of the the bonds between chemicals I think um, that that are present as it runs through that planter um, highly reactive stuff so after the roots of the plant has, has helped to clean the water running through the planter there there's a small well and another pump powered by whatever, solar panel, battery, um, and you pump that water then to the systems for your, for your toilets. It's clean enough after filtering to use for systems in the toilets, maybe you want to drop it in a tank as well, but the, the well at the end of that planter can act as, as the storage, so you don't necessarily need a separate tank then to fill your systems. Um, some of the figures I've seen for the amount of water with, that we use for flushing our toilets is sometimes like bandied about at 40% of household water usage is what we use for flushing our toilets and that's water that's been processed and technically you know drinkable um, as the water company would tell you other people would disagree but um, but it's it's water we don't need to use for flushing the toilets and this water serves multiple purposes um, so they can produce plenty of food things like Herbs, tomatoes, even banana trees I've so seen in some pictures of Earthships on the south facing wall there. Uh, berries, there's uh, all kinds of stuff. Cucumbers, pumpkins, whatever you want you can you can probably probably grow in that planter at, at the front of the house and because it is quite substantial and it's the length of the building um, you can probably get some nice production in there. So the kitchen sink we've talked about once or twice with a few of us. Um, at the at the eco home meetings um, and I've seen other stuff about using the kitchen sink online and stuff from many years ago when they first started building earthships the wastewater from the kitchen sink did at some points go into the grey water it was included in the grey water but if you're using fats and oils when you cook or whatever general food waste going down that that waste pipe and into the into the filter it can be it can be quite gunky, greasy and unpleasant for people to clean. So now I think common practice is just to put the kitchen the kitchen wastewater in with the black water and all out to the septic tank. So talking about the septic tank, black water is the other kind of water. Grey water is from hand basins and showers. Black water is from your toilets. 
So we typically need to process that black water through a, a septic tank, something with reed beds, um, before allowing it back onto our land, into the groundwater, the water table, etc. Um, you definitely need to do something with it. You don't want any kinds of diseases or, or cholera or typhoid, any of the stuff that we think of as an old Victorian epidemic kind of thing. Um, and the kitchen sink waste water often goes in with the toilet water now into the black water and into the septic tank. So I've got an x-ray image here from my, my SketchUp model. Uh, you can see through the ground there the septic tank outside. This is where the wastewater from the toilets and the kitchen sink would flow into. Um, the overflow from the septic tank then goes into uh, what's called an exterior rubber-lined botanical cell, if you look at the Earthship literature. Um, dig a trench, line it with a rubber-lined, a rubber lining that's uh, appropriate for that usage, and then your overflow from the septic tank flows into there, and you've got more water on your property that you can use for growing other things. Um, landscaping plants, this is what I've seen a lot on the Earthship Biotecture website and and around the interwebs, but I've I've heard more than once of people using this for things like fruit trees, not herbs and salad vegetables, because if there are any pathogens making their way out of that septic tank and and into your exterior botanical cell there, you don't want them in lettuce, right? That's going to be a trip to the toilet for a couple of days, <laughs> probably. Um, but plants with trunks, so things like bananas, papaya, guava, what else have I put on here? Oh, citrus stuff, things like lemon, lime, oranges. Anything with a trunk, from the tests that I've seen from, from labs or from, from people who said they had their stuff tested in a lab, um, everything comes back fine in terms of being fit for human consumption. So I would personally throw banana trees and whatever else I could get in this botanical cell. In the US it costs maybe 10 US dollars, something like that, to get uh, some kind of lab test toxicology, whatever it's called, testing for pathogens. Um, a few bucks in the US to get that fruit or that that yield, whatever you're you're getting out of that production from that plant, and maybe the soil itself, you could test as well. But really cheap in the US to do. I can I, I would assume you can get those tests in the UK, Europe, Asia. We're in Taiwan. I'm pretty sure we've got labs in Taiwan as well. Um, so yeah, that's the disclaimer. I would just say test it. From from what I've read online, people seem to say that it's absolutely fine after it comes out of the septic tank or reed bed system or whatever they're using. Um, but test it, and then you know. So that's the end of contained sewage treatment. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Hit subscribe if you want to see uh, another video like this or, or share it with some other guys in the group. And I'll see you in the next video for grey uh, water harvesting, I think. Okay.